All righty, we have fruit. We have oatmeal. We mm, have... No way. Uh, okay, how about some crackers, huh? Nah. Just some apple juice. Go grab it. Okay. Getting sleep last night? A little. Can I drink it in the living room so I could watch Superman? Sure, sweetie. He hasn't eaten anything solid in over 24 hours. The chemo you've got him on isn't working, and it's making him miserable. It's hard for me to see him hurting, too, Frank. But we have to stay positive. If the chemo doesn't put him into remission, we'll move on to the next step. You think he's going to need the bone marrow transplant? There's a good possibility. Well, uh, we have a plan of attack. That's really good. And if, if the transplant doesn't work, What's next? Hello. Good morning, sunshine. I have here with me the results from the antigen test. Oh, great, great. You found my organizer. I'll, I'll be right there. How'd you get in here? What's your name? Victor. Victor, I thought I'd never see you again. I thought you were gone for good. I am. No, Victor, don't. Don't leave. Please. It's for the best. Goodbye, Mark. Goodbye, Mark. Goodbye, Mark. <sighs> Gail. Kevin Collins, I need to see you right away. information we need to find a donor for Neil? Yeah. Yeah, it's all set. Yeah, thanks to your blood sample and that of Neil's real father. Oh, oh, thank God. Okay, okay, we can start the search. You know, uh, being the curious George that I am, I uh, went ahead and matched up Joe's genetic information with that of Neil's real father. Yeah, so? Uh, so? There was a 50% match. Now, did you know that only siblings share that much genetic information. <laughs> Seeing the Scanlon brothers simultaneously, that is risque even for you. It was a very complicated period in my life. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Okay, fine, fine. Pass judgment on me all you want. But my primary concern has been my son since the day he was born. Uh, wait, hold on. Uh, does, does Frank know he's a papa? Yeah, obviously he does. He gave me the blood. 
You know, I thought it was Neil's bad luck that he drew Joe for a father, but to have been sired by Frankenstein, it's, it's a burden no child should ever have to bear. He won't bear it. Neil will never know the truth, and neither will Joe. Ooh, I don't know, you know, news like this is bound to come out. I swear, Chris, if you say one word, I will make certain that your fiancé hears you ever missing money. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, why would I ever spill? Can't you see how much I enjoy having something to hold over you and Frank? Ready to give this eating thing a try. Hey, all right. Hey, that's my boy. What's it gonna be? Chef Dad at your service. Uh, no offense, but if you cook, I'll barf for sure. Oh, smart. Hey, 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 what do you say? My, my grilled cheese are world famous. How about a banana is from crackers? You got it. Okay. Oh. Oh. Glad you're off today. I asked to be called in if my patient in ICU woke up. Okay. Can hang with Uncle Frank. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fine. Just go ahead. Okay. I won't be gone long. You try to get down as much as you can, okay? I will. Bye. You don't really feel like eating, do you? No. But Dad wants me to. Must be tough with all of us watching every move you make. Yeah. What's up with the long faces? Hey, you're eating good. Hey, look, can you keep an eye on Neil for a couple minutes? Yeah, no problem. Okay. Where are you going? That is for me to know and for you to find out later. Dr. Baldwin, you have given me so much useful information. General Hospital, I, I really feel like I'm going to fit right in. Oh, well, I'm delighted to hear you say that because we feel very lucky to have you. Thank you for that. I'll tell you, I would love to pick your brain about the grant money and about the hospital in Miami. Ah, yes, I know, and we will do it one day. No, um, I'm, I'm sorry. How rude of me to monopolize your time like this. Well, no, really, not at all. It's just that when we scheduled uh, this meeting, uh, my calendar was clear, but I had to make a last-minute appointment for someone else. Well, patients do come first. <laughs> yes. Fates it. Oh! Come in, come in. Sorry to interrupt, but your secretary. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. Well, you're not at all. Come in, we're finished. Uh, Kevin, have you met Dr. Rachel Locke? Yes, I have. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Dr. Locke has joined your staff. Congratulations. You seem to be settling right into Port Charles. Well, you know, I like to make a place seem like home as soon as possible. Have you moved around a lot? Not really. You know, I've taken up enough of your time. I'll let you get to your session. Well, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call. Thank you. Well, I guess it was kind of obvious I'm here as a patient. I'm sorry, does that bother you? Not on general principle. It's just that I have my doubts about Dr. Locke. I heard that Dr. Locke is taking over Julie's treatment. Kevin, are you sure that professional competition isn't coloring your impression of her? Well, I'd be lying if I didn't admit I'm a little miffed at being replaced, but that's not the only thing I'm feeling. My instincts tell me that Rachel Locke could be dangerous. There's a lot more to her than she's letting on. I need to make sure we have an understanding. I'll keep your secret if you keep mine. Hey, did you get your organizer? Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, what are you doing here? Isn't this your day off? Well, I came in to check on, on a patient. Oh. And I heard our HL ice creams are back. Oh, wow, good, good. Have you had a chance to look at them? No, not yet. I just picked them up. Well, I hope everything's in order. No, well, everything looks fine. We have what we need to find a marrow door. Good. I'll put in a call to the registry right now. Okay. 
this will work. I have a good feeling. Me too. Wonder how good Joe's feeling would be if he knew that the results were from Frank's blood. Did you speak to Grandma today? Yeah, earlier this morning. She must be sad about Victor. Yeah, she is. But it helps to have family around. You know, if you're up to it, I can take you by to see her before I head over to Lucy's. Okay. Where do you think people go when they die? Someplace fun and peaceful, where you get to be with everyone you love. But you know what? You're going to have to wait a long time before you find out. I know. What's up? Not much. Just beating Lark as usual. <laughs> it's because you cheat. Where'd you go? To pick up some medicine for Neil. Dad didn't tell me about any medicine. Because he didn't prescribe it. This is my kind of medicine. The best kind there is. Laughter. <laughs> okay. Look at this. The Three Stooges, Evan Costello, Laurel Hardy? <laughs> the complete collections. <laughs> These are all mine? Every one of them. You know, I, I know how bored you get having to be at home so much. This is awesome. <laughs> You know, pretty soon I'll be asking you if there are any messages for me in that pile. Yes, so I hear congratulations are in order. Welcome to General Hospital, Dr. Locke. You know, I didn't expect to get a warm reception from you. But uh, thank you for that one anyway. I hope that we can keep the hatchet buried. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to getting to know you much better. I spent so much time being ashamed of Victor. Pretending that he didn't exist. And now he doesn't. <sighs> I wasted so much time. <sighs> I've been having vivid dreams of Victor. Well, Kevin, it's not unusual to have dreams of someone who has died. Well, it's not the dreams of him when I'm asleep that bother me. It's the ones that I have of him when I'm wide awake. Well, we have been down that path before, haven't we? During the murders when you used to have images of Ryan. But, you know, it doesn't mean that you're losing touch with reality. I'm not sure you understand. It's not just Victor that I'm having visions of. I'm having visions of someone who isn't even real. It's the boy from the novel I'm writing. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> well, I'm glad it does to one of us. Kevin, I believe you're seeing images of Victor because you feel you let him down somehow, that you went to Italy... But I didn't find him. him in time. I know. And I think these images of this imaginary boy really represent you as a child. Victor saved me when I was a child, so now I feel guilty that I wasn't able to save him. Don't you think that could explain what's going on? Maybe. These images are so disturbing. I just hate that he died alone. I know how hard that is, but if you could just accept that there was no way that you could ever prevent that, I think the visions will stop. I hope you're right.
When friendship turns to forbidden passion, do you follow your conscience? We can't do that. You were trying to give me what you thought I wanted. Your common sense, which I don't have, kicked in and stopped us. Or do you listen to your heart? I think it's time that we admit what's really going on between us. Will they give in to temptation? Escape to all my children on ABC Daytime. This is the Niagara Falls one. Slowly he turned, step by step. Thanks, Uncle Frank. <laughs> hey, look, you don't have to thank me for anything. This is what uncles are for. Hey, what's going on? These are all mine. Uncle Frank gave them to me. There must be 20 tapes here. 25. Who wants to go and watch them up with me? Uh, maybe later, sweetie. Why don't you head on up, okay? Be yes. careful, don't drop those. What the hell do you think you're doing? Making Neil happy? A couple of tapes would have been fine, Frank. This is excessive. Yeah, I can give Neil whatever I want, and there's nothing you can do about it. Unless you want to tell him that he can't have the gift. I happen to be a responsible parent, Frank. I know that taking those tapes away wouldn't be good for him. And I have no idea what's good for Neil because I am just his uncle? One of the most important things we have to do for Neil while he fights this illness is treat him like a normal kid. You spending hundreds of dollars on him for the heck of it is not what he needs. I managed to make that kid forget that he was sick for a while. There is nothing wrong with that. Of course you don't get it. I'm trying to reason with a man who doesn't even have money for the mortgage, but blows a wad like this on videotapes. What do you do, run up your credit cards? It's none of your business. Okay, you guys, um, <sighs> this is really necessary. Yeah, I am fed up with him acting like I have to report to him. And I'm fed up with your lack of ethics, Frank. It's as if you have no concept of right or wrong, and you don't even care. I do not want my son learning a thing from you. Oh, you understand that? Oh, please. Your big problem is that for 20 seconds, Neil looked up to someone other than the almighty Joseph. You know, if Neil wasn't sick and didn't love living here so much, I would get him as far away from you as possible. But since I won't uproot him, I'm warning you, you do anything... Neil to... is my nephew. I would never hurt him. Like I'm supposed to believe family means anything to you, Frank. What you believe is your problem. I'm gonna go watch tapes with Neil. Absolutely. Being hired by such a prestigious institution like this one definitely deserves a party. Congratulations. I just wish everyone were as excited about my new job as you are. Ellen Burgess, a little less than thrilled with the news. The last time Ellen Burgess cracked a smile, dinosaurs roamed the earth. Boy, I really wish you could give me a tip or two on how to deal with her condescension. Well, mostly I ignore her. Ellen Burgess isn't as high and mighty as she pretends to be. Well, then you're a better person than I am, considering the way she badmouths you. She gave me a little warning about you. <laughs> well, not that I care, but what did she say? She said that my stock would go down among the other staff members if they found out I was friendly with you. Something about you being on probation for unauthorized lab work. <laughs> what, did she tell you I boil kittens, too? No, no, she didn't. Don't worry. Whatever she said, it didn't alter my opinion of you. But boy, she didn't want to stop. I'll tell you, she kept going on and on. Told me about how she and Dr. Harmon almost had you thrown out of the hospital because of some pictures that you posted of the two of them. Ellen told you all of this? Yeah, well, I think she was just trying to embarrass you. It certainly wasn't because we're friendly. Yeah, well, believe me, I'm the last person Ellen Burgess wants to tick off. Why is that? Because I happen to know that she danced the lateral lumbata with another man, and her boyfriend, Harmon, has no idea. Well, I appreciate you squeezing me in the way you did. Oh, well, I just hope it helped. I think it did. Now, why don't you get off to your meeting, and I'll see if I can find Eve. Hi. Okay. Oh. oh, hello. How are you, doctor? Oh, please, call me Rachel. Oh, right. Well, Rachel, um... Big hospital. How are you finding your way about? Uh, pretty well. As long as I can find the path from my office to the cafeteria, I'll be fine. Oh. Well, stay away from the mystery meat. 
I do have an appointment. Excuse me. Bye, Kevin. Bye-bye. You know, taking over your old position, it's not going to be an easy task. I'm sure you'll find some way to manage. Everyone here, they have a great deal of respect for you. Even after the unfortunate circumstances which led to your departure. Well, that unfortunate circumstance was a long time ago. You all right? Yes, I'm fine. I just... I have been getting some headaches. I just need to sit down. Tonight, Berg flies all the way to Oxford, England for the love of his life. The only problem is she's in Oxford, Mississippi. Watch a hilarious Two Guys and a Girl, ABC Tonight.